Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about what is Wavehook, how to configure it, and we will see one demo example with that. So, what is Wavehook? So, Wavehook is a lightweight HTTP pattern for connecting the Wave APIs and the services with the publish and subscribe model. So, what is publish and subscribe model? It is similar to our YouTube channels where we subscribe to YouTube channel particular and then whenever the content creator of that YouTube channel they publish the video then we'll get the notifications so similar to that it happens for the HTTP endpoints so the uh, the, the service provider they will provide the HTTP endpoints and then when we consume it that so whenever the event occurs on the uh, so when the whenever the the provider they will they will upload something that some event happens then the receiver will get the notifications alerts on that so this is the publish subscribe model so this wavehook is released with the uh, customer engagement app with the version 9.0 since then it is available for us to use it customize it whenever it is required for uh, making the lightweight uh, interface with the dynamics so uh, with the wavehook as we can integrate with the dynamics and we can send the data from the dynamics to a uh, third to the external services with the wavehook so when you consume the wavehook as a dynamics we can have the approach of the synchronous and synchronous way we can configure it and this invoking of this uh, wavehook we can do uh, through the plugin station tool or like we can say plugin steps with the plugin station tool and then uh, with the custom workflow activity also now uh, when we configure the wavehook we need to secure it the to secure the wavehook endpoint we can have three different approaches where the way the wavehook is designed we can configure here so we can have the http header where sometimes we need to pass the authorization code or some subscription key to secure it so the header will be we can configure the head as a header then there will be wavehook key where we can have the code or id created which we can configure here to secure the webhook another is using the query parameter where mostly the the uh, authentication details will be passed as a query string in the webhook url and then we can configure we can configure the authentication as a query string in the webhook registration so um we'll see the demo this is the basic details of the wavehook now we will see the demo of this one and in the demo i wanted to tell you what i'm going to achieve here so the outcome of the demo is that whenever i will get the record of one particular entity then i want to get the in-app notification of that so for that we need to see a little bit about the in-app push notification how it works so i will show you that uh, how it is working so uh, in the dynamics i'm going to dynamics now so i log into the dynamics so i have logged into the dynamics and here we have the icon called app notifications here so by default uh, this will not be visible you have to enable it and to enable it we have to modify the app which we are going to use it where we want to see it so currently since i'm in the customer service app so i need to edit this customer service app to enable the app notification so for that we have to log into the uh, make.powerapps.com that site and then you can go to the apps you can select your model driven app here and under the edit button uh, after doing the edit of that particular app we have to go to the setting and under the setting we have the features and from the here features we have to enable the in-app notification feature of this app so this will be available across all the model driven app uh, if you want to enable it we can enable if, if this is not enabled then this uh, icon of this notification will not be visible through that app so now you can see since on the um, customer service app i have enabled the in-app notification that is why i can see this icon so uh, make sure uh, if you want to test your in-app notification this is enabled in your model driven app okay so that is one configuration we have to do now we have to create the uh, we have to create the uh, 
uh, service endpoint which we can register and webhook so here in the demo uh, this is the steps i'm going to perform so first i'm going to create the webhook receiver url which will be the http url and i will take the power automate flow as we can know in the power automate flow we can uh, trigger the request type which will be generating the url http url and that url we can configure as a, a webhook then inside the power automate flow i will be creating the app notification record and this will be this notification record will be pushed into this uh, uh, notification icon which we have seen in the dynamics under the under the customer service app and once this uh, once i will have the http url then we will configure the webhook and to subscribe that particular url we will use the plugin session step a uh, plugin, plugin step uh, through the plugin session tool to uh, register the step on the create message of that particular entity when the record is created so that it will subscribe to that particular uh, event so whenever this uh, create happens then it will send the details of that event to those uh, to that http url which is nothing but on power automate flow so now then after this uh, message is record is created then we can see the notification so this is the demo of this video so as i mentioned the steps so first i need to create the uh, wavehook receiver here first so for that uh, i have login to uh, flow.microsoft uh, flow uh, flow.microsoft.com which is nothing but make.powerautomate.com here i will create the new flow and uh, it will be request type so because request will give the uh, uh, options of the uh, uh, request request i will give it will give the options of the uh, uh, http url so when http request is received okay i'll give this request dnlv webhook request okay webhook request demo okay this is the uh, name of my flow and then uh, the type of trigger is when the http request is received so i have selected it and now i'm creating it so it will add the uh, trigger uh, action here now i need to add one more step here so i will take the one step here of adding the notification record which i have mentioned in the my demo step so it is the part of dataverse connector so i will use the dataverse connector here and then i will add a record new record and then i want to create the notification here so that is why i will look for the entity notification so first entity is the notification which gives the options to for me to what type of notification i want to set details of the notification so i'm just giving the uh, wavehook wavehook uh, title and then body from uh, wavehook wavehook notification PA, something like that and then here uh, when the notification will be displayed in the into the dynamics here then what type of notification we want to what type of icon we want to show them so that icon we have different options we are having value information uh, mention success or warning so i'm selecting as a information there are other options here the priority or what a priority we want to set the notifications so we are having normal and then high so we can select the uh, any one of these as per the requirement I currently have set it as a high there is one more option called the expiry second so what will happen is that when the notification is created and it is pushed to the here in this notification icon then after uh, some time it should be automatically disappeared from here so that second number of the seconds we have to specify here so if you want to do the notification configuration that one so you can set it here there is a data field also which you can set the notification data in the JSON format that the uh, uh, link of this particular record if you want to format it you can do that one so this configurations we can do when you are having that kind of notification record when you try to build it but i'm just keeping it very simple because i want to to see the notification of this which i when i'll create it into my notification box so that is why i'm not adding this one
so this is the very simple configuration of the uh, notification record then i am going to add the another uh, step last step uh, because I, whenever anybody uh, consumes this uh, http endpoint they have to get the response so that is why i'm adding the another action as a response and i'm uh, giving that uh, always as a 200 um, here so success so this when i'll save it uh, this will get the url for me under this http action here okay so now this url is created so this is url where we will be using it uh, to uh, register the webhooks so i'll copy this url i'll into my notepad and this url is created so you can see till invoke after that it, it start with a query string so uh, from here the questing starts so this questing we have to these are the authentication details we need to configure on the webhook and this will be the our main url part of the webhook and this is the authentication so this this app version then we are having the sp details where the filter it is uh, the percentage 2f means it is a forward slash so wherever we are having the percentage 2f we have to replace with the forward slash and then we are having the sv that is 1.0 and then there is a signature code so this thing we need to configure on the uh, webhook now to configure on the webhook uh, so we have to log into the plugin station tool so i have logged into the plugin station tool here i'm going to register the new webhook so when you go to register and new webhook it will ask you the name of the webhook so i'll just add the create um, demo webhook okay now this is the endpoint url so in this case here the url will be till invoke the the question marks here it is right before the question mark uh, what were the url part is there that we need to configure as the root url so i'm copying here and putting it to the endpoint url and after that we are having the authentication type so what type for the authentication since uh, this uh, the url what we have created it does not have the header kind of configuration setting here it is a part of the query string because we saw that url uh, entire url was part of this one right so this authentication details as a part of query string so that is why i need to select the authentication type as a query string but uh, there will be some uh, endpoint i'm saying this is the one of the endpoint url but they in the real time we'll have we can have the endpoint which as a created as a azure function where with the a url will be the different where the only code will be there so in that case we can use the key there sometimes if you are passing the authentication as a different subscription key a different type then we can take as a header as the configuration there so here uh, this is a straightforward so i'm just taking as a uh, uh, type as a uh, query string and then i will configure the property of that so first one is the uh, app api version so it is this one okay next is uh, sp which is a forward slash trigger i'll replace here with all the for percentage 2f with the forward slash so this is the forward slash this is forward slash and this one is the forward slash so now the sp is equals to forward slash this one so here the sp parameter next is sv this is 1.0 okay and the last is signature so this is the value of the signature okay so now we have configured the uh, webhook so we can save it okay now this webhook will be available for us so we have created this webhook create demo webhook right so now uh, 
to uh, we have to create the event where this webhook will be uh, consuming this uh, URL. So the event I'm taking as I mentioned in the create of the record. So we'll configure the step register new step here and on the create of the record. So here in the demo, I have already modified my uh, customer service app where I have created the new entity something webhook one and on the create of this record, I will trigger the webhook. Okay, and then I will get the notification. This is what I want to achieve. So here uh, I will take the message as create. Then the prime entity is DNLB webhook one and uh, that's all. I think the remaining configuration will come automatically. And here, as we were saying, that uh, the stage can be configured different, or uh, like synchronous and asynchronous. As per the uh, nature, the webhook you want, the uh, the trigger trigger nature you want to keep, you can. Uh, uh, Take the execution mode whatever you want as per your requirement so currently i'm keeping as a synchronous because i want to see the error message if my webhook is failing to create any record so i'm keeping as a synchronous uh, it is post operation stage so and here in the case of webhook step you cannot have the secure and unsecure configurations we cannot have that one because this will work when we register the normal plugin step through that for the dynamics not as a webhook so that is why this configuration secure and unsecure configuration will be disabled for this okay so registering this step so now now my webhook is configure and it is ready to test it and to test it uh, I have to create the record of the webhook in the dynamics so I'm going to create the new record something test webhook demo So it has been created means uh, I did not get any error message immediately, which means these uh, this is configured correctly and to test it my webhook has run or not. So I will go back and I'll see the run history of my this uh, HTTP endpoint demo and you can see yes, it has been triggered. It was successful and it has created and here I want to see if the webhook yeah, you can see the webhook notification that uh, notification also got created. So like this, you can trigger your any HTTP endpoint with the configuration of the webhook. And the one advantage is that when this trigger will happen, then the details of the event, since we created this record, the details of this event record, it will be uh, pushed to this notification. So if you expand this uh, message, if you see the body here, it contains all the details of, of the event details here. Then the, in the body, we can have the what who what is the initiating user ID, what is the depth of this uh, call. Then in the uh, input parameters, we are having the attributes. There we can have the details of the different fields, the name fields and all. If you want to keep it, we want to pass it. You can see the name data, all those things are uh, pushed through this uh, event details and we can extract this data with the parsing the JSON value and then you can use it if you want to do something here. So like this, like this, we can configure and use this uh, webhook whenever this kind of interface you want to achieve. So I hope this video was useful to you and let me know any questions and suggestions here. Thank you for watching this video.